Welcome everyone. Today we will cover component and architecture of OpenStack, which is day two and day three of OpenStack series. So first of all, we will go through each and every component of OpenStack. You can see the component, which is Horizon, Nova, Glance, Swift, Neutron, Sender, Heat, Cellometer, and Keystone. Horizon will provide you a graphical user interface service to access and manage the OpenStack cloud. Let's take an example. Let me draw a user, right? Suppose this is a user. Okay. And he want to access the resource of this OpenStack cloud. And using this resource, he want to create a virtual machine. Okay. So first of all, this horizon will help this user to access the OpenStack cloud with the help of URL, right? The URL which is available after deploying your package stack, okay? And through this URL, it will access the resource and manage the OpenStack cloud. And second component is Keystone, which provide authorization and authentication of OpenStack services. It also manage user role and projects. So suppose this user want to access OpenStack cloud, right? Here Keystone will ensure whether this user is legitimate or not. It will check into the database. If he is not a valid user, then token will not be initiated and collection will be dropped and he will not be able to access OpenStack component or the services. Now the another important component of OpenStack is Nova. Nova is a compute which manage and provision virtual machine on the hypervisor. So in case if this user want to create a virtual machine, right, then this Nova will talk to other services like Glance for email, Neutron for network and sender for storage and then create a virtual machine for this particular user. Another component is Glance. Glance is having a image repositories which consists a lot of images and as per the requirement, user requirement, it will provide the image. Another component is Swift. Swift is an object storage. So it will provide the storage in the form of HTTP or HTTPS like Google storage, AWS storage or the SAF storage. Then next component is Neutron. Neutron is basically provide a IP address which is which is help to provide the networking to the OpenStack cloud, right? Now then Cinder. Cinder will provide you a volume as a block storage. So if you want a persistent volume for your VM, Cinder will provide you. And next will be Heat. Heat will provide you template based orchestration to automate your task. In this case, there will be a template. In a template, you will have to define all the available resources as a variable like uh, network, image, flavor, storage, then this template will help you to automate your tasks. Like if you want to deploy an instance, the instance will be automatically deployed with the help of this template. Now the next component is Cellometer, which will track your resource information and provide the costing of your resources, how much you have used, right? And your costing will be done with the help of this cellometer or the telemetry so guys this is all about important component of openstack cloud which i asked you to cover in day two now we will move to day three which is openstack logical architecture so i have created a ppt for you guys so this is openstack conceptual architecture here you can see the complex architecture of openstack this diagram will help you to understand how these components are talking to each other to provision a virtual machine. First of all, Horizon will provide a graphical user interface for a user to create the VM. So the first request will go to the Keystone. It will check the authentication authorization of that particular user. Then Keystone will give the response to that Horizon again that uh, the user is valid or authenticated. Now the second role will be played by Nova. Nova will talk to each of the component and ask them 
to give the resource for provisioning this virtual machine. So first it will go to the neutron and neutron will provide him the network. So before providing the network, it will go again to the keystone and ask, hey, I get this request, whether this is legitimate or not. Then keystone will tell him, okay, this is the right request. You can provide the resources. Then neutron will provide the IP address detail to the NOAA. Then NOAA will go to the glance and he again ask for the images. Then glance again go to the keystone and ask whether this is legitimate or not. Should I provide them the image or not? So keystone will verify in the database which is using MariaDB data, MariaDB database and then it will provide him the information. Okay, this is the legitimate resource you can provide the image. Now NOAA will talk to Cinder for the block storage. Cinder again confirm back from Keystone whether this is a legitimate request or not. Keystone will check in the database and provide him the information. Then after the confirmation, Cinder will provide the storage to the NOAA. Actually, it provides the metadata of uh, the storage. And then this NOAA will collect all the information. In case uh, object storage is required, then it will go to the Swift as well and get the storage from there. And after collecting all the resource, he will provision a virtual machine by talking to Levert on the hypervisor. And this is how your virtual machine will be provisioned in the open stack. To explain you in a much better way, I have captured a low level flow. Here end to end all flow to deploy and stands in open stack cloud. This entire flow will help you to more drill down into it. So first of all, this OpenStack CLI slash dashboard that is Horizon. It will provide your graphical user interface for a particular user to access the cloud. The keystone will again authenticate and authorize to that particular user and also check the user about which project he is working on and uh, what are the role given to him. Now, as for the database confirmation about that particular user, the request is good will go to this NOAA API. After getting the confirmation from Keystone, NOAA API will register the request from the user that he want to launch an instance in his NOAA database. Now this NOAA database will talk to NOAA scheduler through REST API call to take the request from the queue. Then this NOAA scheduler will take the request from the queue and assign a host ID to that instance. Then NOAA compute will pick the resource from the queue and send back to NOAA conductor and ask him to provide server instance and flavor detail. Again, the NOAA conductor will provide this detail through queue. After getting all the relevant information from internal component of NOAA, NOAA compute will talk to Glance and ask him to provide the image. Now, Glance will talk to Keystone and ask him to confirm whether auth token is provided or not, whether the request is legitimated from the user or not. Then Keystone will check and ask the Glance to provide the image to the NOAA. Then Glance will provide the metadata of the image to the NOAA compute. Then NOAA compute will again ask to Neutron to provide him the IP address. Then Neutron will again go and ask to Keystone whether the auth token is legitimate or not, you have provided the odd token or not and Keystone inform that the request is legitimated and I provided the odd token to the user. Now you can provide the IP address to the NOAA. Now NOAA collect the IP address from the Neutron. Again NOAA go to the sender and ask him to provide the block storage to him for the virtual machine. Then again sender will confirm back to the Keystone about the odd token whether the odd token is legitimate or not provided to the particular user and that user is valid or not. If that user is valid, then Keystone again send back the request to the sender using REST API call and then again uh, sender will send this information using REST API to the NOAA compute that this is the block storage and uh, the metadata of this all image IP address and Storage will be kept in the NOAA compute. Now, NOAA compute has all the details. It will talk to the Levert. 
which is in between NOAA compute and hypervisor and finally through leeward the VM got provisioned successfully on the hypervisor. This is how you can create a virtual machine on OpenStack and once your OpenStack VM is created you can deploy application on top of it and you can use it. So this is this is how OpenStack works this is the call flow of OpenStack in a very detailed way. If you have any question or comment just write a comment on the comment box. In the next video, I will cover day 4, day 5, day 6, where we will see how to deploy an OpenStack cloud using PackStack. Thanks for watching the video.